please welcome Maestro Franz Anton Krager, Maestro Andres Grabiak, Choral and Choral Director and Conductor Dr. Betsy Cook Weber, and Conductor Dr. Jeb Mueller. Kindly take your seats. Let us welcome wife of the late Muhammad Ali, your master of ceremonies this evening, Miss Lani Ali. Muhammad and Senator Hatch had such a special friendship. He would be so proud to celebrate alongside these young musicians and with all you tonight. Muhammad, like Senator Hatch, never counted the days, but made the days count. Please welcome Director of Instrumental Music at the National Cathedral Schools and Music Director of Orchestral Activities at the George Washington University, Mastro Scott Wood.
Ladies and gentlemen, Chairman of the Harani Family Foundation, Vice President of Board of Directors for Virtuosi in Houston, and your executive producer for this evening, Dr. Garrett Peel. Good evening. George Herbert Walker Bush will be remembered as one of the most beloved American presidents, and to those who knew him, our most beloved American. He told us, no definition of a successful life can do anything but include serving others. And by that standard, Senator Orrin Hatch has had a most abundant life of success. Tonight is a celebration, a celebration of friendship, of music, and most of all, a celebration of the years of dedicated service of Utah Senator Orrin Hatch. <laughs> On behalf of the Harani family, my wife Mandy and our children, I welcome you to the Kennedy Center and invite you to open your ears and open your hearts. As many of you may already know, Senator Hatch is a devoted musician and composer. Throughout his over 200 original compositions, some of which you will hear tonight, performed by these extraordinary talents, Senator Hatch's music embodies what it means to abide in God and to remain steadfast to the goodness of the human spirit, to show God's patient love no matter the person, the faith, or the flaw. Tonight, among the amazing performances, I want to point out a special expression. Monza Harani and Senator Hatch are friends, bonded by many things, not least of all by classical music. These two men have even composed several of their own original pieces over the years. Unfortunately, in the last year, Monza suffered a severe injury to his shoulder. Doctors told him that his conducting days were over days that when he was just a young boy fell in love with classical music. He's an architect, engineer, an amazing man of construction, not a conductor, but it is his greatest love. And this evening, he's taking up the baton one more time to conduct a tribute to his longtime brother, Cinder Hatch. Tonight, cannot be a success without the unwavering support of the Dean of the Washington National Cathedral, the very Reverend Randolph Marshall Hollerith, and the one and only Deborah Rutter, president of this amazing Kennedy Center. Deborah. On behalf of all of us and all of them and just everyone that loves music, we thank you very much. So as you listen tonight, I ask that you remain mindful of what sets our country apart from the rest of the world. What makes us the United States of America? Let us be unyielding in our call for civility. Let us place progress over partisanship to find solutions. Let us be known for our kindness. And as we are all called to serve one another, let us be prayerful that music will unite us and indeed help heal our land. History is watching. Thank you and enjoy the evening.
honorary event chair and beloved friend to the Hatch family, the late Senator Ted Kennedy's wife, Victoria Reggie Kennedy. Good evening. What a beautiful night of tribute to a man who has dedicated his life to public service and to beautiful music. They called Orrin Hatch and Ted Kennedy the odd couple, the conservative from Utah and the liberal from Massachusetts. They joked that when they worked together to pass legislation, one of them hadn't actually read it. But of course, that was far from true. Instead, they found a way to reach common ground, not to get everything each of them wanted, but to find areas where they could agree, to achieve a goal they believed would benefit the people of the country they both loved so much. One of the collaborations that made them both so proud was the passage of the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP the landmark legislation that protects the health of millions of previously uninsured children. They also partnered on the preservation of religious freedom and enshrined into law their commitment to national service. I will never forget the look on Teddy's face when he heard his friend Orrin Hatch moved to rename as the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act, the national service bill they both had worked on for so many years. What generosity of spirit, Oren. Over the years, the odd couple also bonded on their love of music. During particularly difficult and heated negotiations, Teddy would send his help committee staff director the late, wonderful Nick Littlefield, a Broadway singer in his earlier life, to woo Oren with song. <laughs> Oren invariably accepted that olive branch of music, and those two determined senators were able to get back to the negotiating table and to the business of legislating. Oren wrote a beautiful song for Teddy and me on our fifth wedding anniversary, and another for Teddy, when he got sick. But there were so many other private acts of kindness. Oren made the trip to Boston for Rose Kennedy's funeral. And Teddy and I made the trip to Salt Lake City for Helen Hatch's funeral. They supported each other during difficult times of loss. These are the things friends do for each other. And these are the things you never forget. Thank you, Oren, for being a role model with your friend Ted, for working across the aisle, for disagreeing without being disagreeable, and for looking for the good in others and for places to find common ground. May the wind always be at your back, and may your life with Elaine and your wonderful family always be filled with beautiful music. God bless you, my friend, and Godspeed. Welcome Brigham Young's University's Vocal Point. Oh, mm -hmm. 
the crowd screams out, they're screaming your name. Hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay. Hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad. The only way you can know is all you have. When your moment comes, you will say, I, I did it all. I, I did it all. I own every second that this world could give. Spend your day, but they all add up. When the sun goes down, hope you raise your cup. I wish that I could witness all your joy and all your pain. But until my moment comes, I'll say, Thank you, Yolanda, for that introduction. Muhammad Ali's life taught us that fighting for what you believe in and pursuing excellence are the pillars of the American dream. I'm honored to be here tonight to say a few words about my friend Orrin Hatch, the senior senator from Utah, who's also achieved his dreams with excellence and conviction. Having led the finance, judiciary, and help committees, it's safe to say there's no part of the Senate that hasn't been touched by Orrin's legacy. Orrin is my mentor, 
and our connection precedes my time in the Senate. Because way back in 1990, when I was running for the Texas Supreme Court, Orrin came to Dallas, Texas, to headline an event for me and the Chief Justice, a remarkably generous gesture for someone of his stature in the United States Senate. With an incredible work ethic and stamina, Orrin is driven by the belief that he could and he would make a difference in the world. He will be remembered for making every second of his time count. There's no living senator who's had more bills become law than Orrin Hatch. Importantly, he's done it by working, as you've heard, with his colleagues, not just against them. An important lesson for all who serve in the legislative branch. As you heard, he joined with Senator Ted Kennedy on the Children's Health Insurance Program. He's worked across the aisle to lower prescription drug prices, and he pushed the Americans with Disabilities Act over the finish line after a long, hard battle. But Orrin isn't afraid to say no when that is the principled response. He didn't shy away from a fight when it comes to fiscal responsibility, the rule of law, and limited government. He righted wrongs where he saw them, including on intellectual property rights and trade. Maybe his most important legacy is his dignified and civil comportment. He taught us that there is nothing more powerful than a good example. And of course, his most recent historic achievement has been the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, something that hasn't been done in more than three decades. And he's done it all with the trademark humor and sharp wit that we've all come to know him by. Many of us have been on the receiving end of that humor, but we know it was always good fun and never personal. The truth is, Oren loves people, and we love him back. I recall a famous New Yorker who told me after a breakfast at a popular venue where people go to see and be seen, he said Oren hugged him. He was surprised by that show of affection. He said, I've never been hugged by a United States Senator before. But beyond legislation, Oren and his staff have handled countless constituent requests for help with federal agencies, what we generically refer to as casework. He often pins personal letters to Utahns facing problems with their family or a personal loss. Senator Hatch understands that pe the people we're honored to represent are living, breathing human beings, not numbers. He knows there's a man, woman, or child affected by every vote he takes. Oren, as scripture says, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race and you have kept the faith. We will miss you in the Senate, but enjoy your retirement. You've earned it.
Gospel Music Association, Male Vocalist of the Year, Mac Powell of Third Day. Thank you so much. What an honor to be here tonight. What an honor to celebrate uh, Senator Hatch and your service to this country, not only you, but to your family as well. Uh, I feel a little bit out of place with all these wonderful musicians that are here in this amazing choir. I'm just used to hanging out with some garage rock band guys, so these are like the real musicians here tonight. Give them a big hand, they're doing an amazing job. I don't know how to explain it, but I know the words will only do. Miracles with signs and wonders on enough for me to prove to you. No. Don't you know I've always loved you? Even before there was time Though you turn away I tell you still Don't you know I've always loved you And I always will Oh yeah da, da, da. Greater love is not a man than the one who gives his life to prove that he would do anything, and that's what I'm going to do for you now. Don't you know I've always loved you? Even before there was time Though you turn away I tell you still Don't you know I've always loved you And I always will Oh yeah da I've always loved you, and I always will. And I, I, I. Don't you know I've always loved you? And even before there was time, though you turn away, I tell you. Don't you know I've always loved you And I always will Oh yeah da, da, da. Thank you We all know that uh, Senator Hatch is, is a man of faith, and he has shared that with us for many years, and so this is a song about uh, being bold in our faith and sharing that with the world. This is called Mountain of God.
Lord, that I was all alone, broken and free, but you were there with me. Yes, you were there with me. And I didn't even know that I had lost my way, but you were there with me. Yes, you were there with me. Till you opened up my eyes, I never knew. Lord, that I could never make it without you. Even though the journey's long. As I travel on the road, you have led me down. You are here with me. Yes, you are here with me. I have need for nothing more. Oh, now that I have found that you are here with me. Yes, you are here with me. to bring me back again and even though the journey's long and I know the road is hard we're the one who's gone before me you will help me carry on and after all that I've been through now I realize the truth that I must go through Sometimes I think of where it is I've come from And the things I've left behind But if all I have and what I possess Nothing can quite compare with what's in front of me
Thank you, Yolanda, for your kind introduction. Now, allow me to say, in case you all don't know, that the orchestra is absolutely magnificent. Aren't they? Give them a hand. What better to bring us all together than music? And what better reason to come together with that music than to celebrate our very own Senator Orrin Hatch? Let's give the Senator a hand, can we? <laughs> Senator Hatch, I want to thank you. You know, though you and I haven't worked in the same chamber, I've been constantly impressed by your dedication to the country, the state of Utah, and your family, as well as your faith that was just sung about. Your principles and your values are the bedrock of your character. And your character is known and respected far and wide. Um, so, some of y'all may not know that something Senator Hatch, although uh, Senator Cornyn alluded to it, has mastered better than most anybody is well-placed humor. Uh, and laughter is essential, uh, especially in a place like Washington. Although the senators probably like me doesn't believe in political jokes, we've seen too many of them get elected. <laughs> so, Senator Hatch definitely employs humor in almost any occasion and uh, has frequently taken aim at himself. He knows who he is, knows what he stands for, and I bet I would think that he even knows what the Bible says, that laughter is good medicine but that a downcast spirit dries up the bones. I will tell you that I don't recall Senator Hatch ever being accused of having dried up bones. In his 42 years of service to the people of Utah, Senator Hatch has helped just about everybody in every walk of life. He's protected religious freedom, he's promoted a strong economy, and he's encouraged people to go after their very own version of the American dream. Like any good statesman, Senator Hatch approaches discussions thoughtfully, with principles and philosophy in mind, and with his love of people at his very core, at his, in his heart. Each day, each hearing, each vote, he strives to dutifully carry out the responsibility Utahans entrusted to him. We've been blessed by Senator Hatch's steadfast insistence and practice of what's doing right by and for the American people. Senator Hatch reminds us to hope, to work hard, and to dream. His life is a shining life on a hill, if I may borrow a phrase. Thank you, Senator Hatch, for your service and dedication to our nation. Best wishes in your retirement.
serving Solicitor General in Texas history and the first Hispanic American to serve as a U.S. Senator from Texas. Welcome Senator Ted Cruz. Orrin Hatch is a living legend. It's fitting that we are celebrating Oren's life and legacy the very same week we're remembering the legacy of George Herbert Walker Bush. Because both men dedicated their lives, decades, to this country, to impacting and benefiting the United States of America. Oren Hatch was first elected to the Senate in 1976, our nation's bicentennial. I was five years old then. <laughs> For over four decades, Oren has served as a towering leader and figure in the United States Senate. He's chaired the Finance Committee, the Judiciary Committee, the Help Committee. As Chairman of Finance just in the last year, 
He led an effort that passed historic tax reform, cutting taxes across this country for the first time in a generation. And we're seeing now record low unemployment, including the lowest unemployment among Hispanics and African Americans ever recorded in our nation's history. <laughs> Oren's leadership played a huge part in making that happen. On the Judiciary Committee, Oren has participated in the confirmations of 15 Supreme Court justices. For those of y'all counting or keeping track at home, that's a whole lot more than there are justices on the Supreme Court. And in fact, Oren was coming pretty close up to doubling up the court in his tenure of confirmations. Oren has run for president. He's been discussed for decades himself as a potential Supreme Court justice. But more than anything in the Senate, Oren is respected. When he speaks, his colleagues listen, whether Republican or Democrat, his views usually given with a quiet, gentle strength. He's also an encourager. You know, some of us young pups, if you're straying in a direction that he disagrees with, he'll let you know usually with just a raised eyebrow or a somewhat puzzled look. I'm told I've never been myself the recipient of these. <laughs> but he also takes time to pull you aside and share his wisdom. One of my favorite memories serving in the Senate was fairly early on. Oren invited me back to his hideaway. Hideaways are the small private offices that each senator has in the Capitol. They're assigned on seniority, so Oren's is about the size of the concert stage. And we spent about an hour with him regaling me from tales in the Senate, beginning with, you know, Ted, I used to be a rabble rouser too. And he describes, and I don't think there's a senator who hasn't hear, heard the tales from in the 1970s, the battles that he led against democratic efforts to rewrite labor laws. And, you know, he will tell individual senators, he'll say, you know, you're doing all right. He put his hand on your shoulder. Say, you're doing great. Last week at our Senate lunch, one of our colleagues said, look, I know everyone here, Oren has told us, you're the best, but she said, with me, he really means it. <laughs> that encouragement is powerful. And I'll tell you one of the things that is going to be missed more than anything else is Oren's Twitter account. Oren, there's not another senator whose Twitter account would get a round of applause. But I will say one of my favorite tweets came just recently in the midst of Justice Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings. Oren sent around a picture of himself leaning over and talking to Chairman Chuck Grassley. And he captioned it, you know, I knew Spartacus. Oren is a man who loves the Constitution. He loves music as tonight's tribute is recognizing, and he loves the United States of America. And Oren, let me say, I'm proud to be your friend. It is an honor to serve with you, and the entire nation is grateful for your extraordinary service. Mr. Lee Greenwood. I've never had an introduction like that before. <laughs> Thank you, Franz. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the program so far. I will tell you, um, I am proud to be here for this moment. 
Senator Orrin Hatch is a friend for more than 30 years. Representing himself with dignity, always in his presence, I tended to stand up a tad bit straighter. That's because he's a lot taller than me. <laughs> but a man with dignity, and as Senator Cruz pointed out, he would be always the one that would put his hand on your shoulder and either show pleasure or displeasure. When invited to this event, and of course listening to the music of Tchaikovsky just before I came on stage, I'm reminded of the music from the old world that came here to America, which is all we had to refer to at first. Without some of the marches, we maybe not have grown further. But American music has grown over the years, and I've spent a few of them alive. And since beginning my musical career at the age of 10 or 11 or 12, I've seen the involvement of music and how it has affected our population and our culture. It drove me one year in 1983 to write a song that I'd felt in my heart was important for unity for the country. It has actually got bigger than I thought it would. And I proudly sing it tonight for you, for Senator Hatch, and for America. With the help of the Virtuosi Orchestra and my conductor Franz, here is my anthem, God Bless the USA. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today, because the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the U.S. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say,
Texas native and graduate from Brigham Young University, please welcome the Republican National Committee Chair, Rona Romney McDaniel. If I knew I had to follow Lee Greenwood, I would have said no. That was wonderful. Oh my goodness. Well, what a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you so much. As you've heard about all the great accomplishments of Senator Hatch, it is astounding. He is someone, as Senator Cruz said, presided over the hearings of every single Supreme Court justice. He helped Senator Kennedy, in a bipartisan way, pass the American Disabilities Act. He was the leader in passing the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. He has been such a phenomenal beacon in the Senate, but for me, he has a more personal uh, meaning in my life. When I came to Washington, D.C. as a young girl out of Brigham Young University working for a consulting firm, I met a young man who had taken a class from Senator Hatch's daughter-in-law and said, I need to go intern for your father-in-law in Washington, D.C. Well, Mary Alice Hatch got him a job. He interned in Senator Hatch's office and then went on to be a nominations clerk. I've been married to that young man, Patrick McDaniel, for 20 years, and I tell Senator Hatch, thank you for introducing me to my husband. Of course, Senator Hatch is someone who loves family and is a family man. He's been married to his wife, Elaine, for over 50 years. They have six children. They call their children hatchlings. Figure that out. And they have hatched a lot of other hatchlings. They have 23 grandchildren and 24 great-grandchildren. When I took over the position as the RNC chair, I was able to sit with Orrin Hatch at my first Senate policy lunch, and I was a little nervous. I got to say thank you for introducing me to my husband. I got to tell him that I consider him my senator since I went to Brigham Young University and I got married in the state of Utah. And then he said to me, I'm so proud of you. And he was always so encouraging as I took on this new role. He also let me know that if any senators were giving me a hard time, to let him know about it and he would take care of them. I hope that offer still stands. I happen to know the next senator coming from the state of Utah, a senator-elect. I'm going to continue to call him my Uncle Mitt because there will only be one senator for me for my lifetime, and that will be Senator Orrin Hatch. He exemplifies the best of what it means to serve this country with dignity, with honor, with faith, with integrity. He has made our country a better place, and I thank you for it. Thank you so much, Senator Hatch. to dedicate two pieces, me and Senator Hajj work on music for a long time. I was blessed to know him. People count during hard time more than during good time. Inspiration for 40 years stood by me, and we spent a lot of time on music, on everything, nature and everything. We wrote music together and we composed it. Uh, there is a very beautiful piece he won, and it is uh, 
Beethoven, Pastoral, uh, the first movement, Symphony Number no. Six, first movement. And there is another piece also for Elgar that it's a great piece that Elgar composed for his best, best brother and friend, Nimrod. And uh, I like to thank very much uh, the Kennedy Center and uh, Mrs. Kennedy and uh, Deborah Rudder and Vicky Kennedy for a miracle we done to be here, you know, during hard time. <laughs> All our heart go also to President George Bush and his family, but also I thank very much the National Cathedral for their effort. Thank you very much.
Brigham Young University's focal point. You raise me up. One, two, three. When I am down and oh, my soul so weary. When troubles come and my heart burdened be. Then I am still and wait here in the side.
one of the most prolific composers in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a longtime friend of the Hatch family, and musical collaborator, Janice Camp Perry. Ladies and gentlemen, Whitley Phipps.
to just say a few words. Everybody got to do it before. <laughs> that song, Heal Our Land, is perhaps one of the most important songs ever written because it is so needed in our time. We need God to heal our land. <laughs> and Janice Cap Perry, and my dear, dear brother and friend, Senator Hatch and his beautiful wife, Senator Hatch, thank you for writing that song. I remember singing it at the inauguration of President George W. Bush 
there were hanging chads and we needed heal our land. We needed it. <laughs> and we need it today. Thank you for your love. Because of Senator Hatch, I run an organization called the U.S. Dream Academy, and we have mentored and tutored over 10,000 children whose parents are in prison because of Senator Hatch. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Oh.